Good morning, I'm Susan McKenzie and I'll be reading the scripture today. Today's verses are from the message, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Looking for the living one in a cemetery. At the crack of dawn on a Sunday, the women came to the tomb, carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the Master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then, out of nowhere it seemed, two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, Why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up. Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all of this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles, but the apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought they were making it all up. But Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes. That's all. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. God is still speaking. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me, and the dance went on. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Sabbath, and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped, and they stripped, and they hung me high, and left me there on a cross to Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. On a Friday when the sky turned black The heart to dance with the devil on your back They buried my 
my body and they thought I'd gone but I am the dance and I still go on dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance said he they cut me down and I leaped up high I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you, then you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Oh, dance! Happy Easter! Like the disciples that first Easter morning, we've now heard the story of the empty tomb told by the women who saw it and heard the good news from dazzling figures in white. They've reminded us that Jesus said he would be handed over and killed and then rise again on the third day. But the disciples are skeptical. Maybe some of us are in that place this morning, and that's okay. Even if we believe the women, I suspect that many of us are still unsure what that empty tomb means. The women that first Easter Sunday and the author of the Gospel of Luke don't provide us with answers. Jesus doesn't even show up at the tomb in this version of the story. There's no encounter between Mary Magdalene and Christ at the graveyard the way there is in the book of John. In Luke, there's just an empty tomb, and we're left to connect the dots. Luke does imply that Jesus is risen, but he stops short of telling us what that means. And even centuries later, Christians are still trying to figure it out. And we don't all agree. One theory, and if you're a Calvinist, this will sound familiar, is that Easter Sunday marks the moment where all humanity is freed, freed at last from sin and death once and forever which is definitely something worth celebrating. Christians who take this approach believe that Jesus died to pay the price for our sin. It sets up the relationship between us and God like a courtroom where God is a judge and we are the accused. We're guilty of sin, but Jesus takes our place receiving the punishment we deserve from a judgmental God, thereby saving us all by grace. A related theory says that Jesus' death was actually payment to Satan, a ransom, to get the rest of us out of hell. Anselm went a slightly different direction in the 9th century when he said what actually happened was that our sin dishonored God. And as humans, there was no way for us to give God all the honor that God is due. Even with all of our repenting and good deeds, we simply can't make up. For all that we've done wrong. Jesus, on the other hand, who in this model is free of sin, owes God nothing. So when Jesus sacrifices himself on the cross, it goes so far above and beyond what God demands that Jesus' surplus is able to repay or satisfy our deficit. There are others who see God not as a judge at all, but more as a compassionate parent in this theory, humans are born innocent, more or less, but as we age, we make choices that lead us down the wrong path. We acquire some baggage along the way. Sin, regret, grief, 
When Jesus dies on the cross, he takes on all of our burdens and exchanges them for hope, identity, forgiveness, and eternal life. Others make Jesus into more of a superhero, a man who knows the pain he'll face and yet courageously chooses to suffer anyway. Those three days he's gone, he dives down into the depths of hell where he battles with the forces of sin and evil and death, emerging victorious and freeing humanity from evil once and for all. And for all of these folks, Easter is the climax, the pinnacle moment where sin and death are either defeated or transformed into everlasting grace. But other Christians aren't so sure that's what happened. One of our UCC ancestors, Horace Bushnell, joined theologians dating back to the ninth century in describing a theory in which the cross is a moral influence. In this model, the purpose of Jesus' death was to influence us, to encourage us to improve our moral behavior. Christians who believe this deny that Christ died to satisfy any kind of divine justice. His death was instead a natural result of a prophetic teacher like Jesus standing up to unjust powers. His martyrdom is meant to demonstrate God's boundless love, but also to wake us up to the reality that as humans, we can be truly awful to those who are doing the right thing. It's meant to soften our hearts and compel us to do better. Easter in this model is not the culmination, but the beginning of our response to Jesus' life and teachings. Salvation comes through our continued actions, not through a one-time act of Christ. In liberation theology, there's also not a sense that salvation comes just once. In liberation theology, Jesus witnesses the suffering of the poor and the outcast, and so he chooses to suffer alongside them, even going to the cross as a victim of abusive powers himself. In liberation theology, God continues to show up where people are suffering. And when Jesus rises, it shows that God will ultimately lift up others who suffer too. And these are just a few of the theories of what the cross and the empty tomb may mean. The author of the Gospel of Luke leaves it open-ended. Easter is a celebration, no matter how you look at it. But the lack of certainty in Luke does leave me feeling a bit uncomfortable. It makes me want to jump to my feet like Peter and run to the tomb and look inside. I want to see it for myself. I want to grasp what's going on. I want to talk to those men in dazzling clothes and ask them if there's more they can reveal. I have so many questions. But like Peter, by the time we arrive at the scene, those figures in white have dispersed. All that's left are some rags that used to wrap Jesus' body, scraps of a story told generations ago that we're still trying to piece together, which leaves Peter and the rest of us to walk away puzzled. My invitation to us this Easter is to embrace that uncertainty to let go of our need to control this story or claim there's a right way to understand it. Instead, I invite us to lean in to the mystery, to trust that God is still speaking. Because the truth is whatever we believe about the meaning of the cross and the empty tomb, the story of the resurrection does not end on Easter. Something happened on Easter, something big, and the disciples and the rest of us may not know what it means for us yet, but we can be certain that God is at work and that God is with us, perhaps in a way that we didn't recognize before. And we can be certain that God is still speaking and that there is so much more to be revealed. Amen.
Let us pray now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loads abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loads abound. Christ is able to make us one. On this table he sets the tone. Teaching people to live, to bless. Love in word and in deed express. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loads abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loads abound.
Thank you.